Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship on this sixth Sunday in Advent. <laughs> the liminal space between preparing for and arriving at Christmas. In these final hours, we rest in the promise that God's work has already been accomplished. And yet we wait with hope for the salvation of our world. In our service of lessons and carols today, we share once again the story of God's salvation written across and sung across the pages of our Holy Bible and of our hymnal. We give thanks that the story of salvation is still being written in our lives and into the life of our church. And so we lift one another up to God and we lift up our ministry to God today. Just around the corner in January, Safe Lot is returning to Zion's parking lot. And so if you are interested in volunteering, you can please sign up in the connection sheet. We'd love to have you um, volunteer. There are so many ways to serve and to care for our neighbors in our community. Also in January, we'll have a new opportunity for faith formation uh, for our middle and high schoolers on Sunday mornings with Zion's youth group. And more information is available in your bulletins about the schedule. If you have any questions, feel free to talk with me or with Jessica after the service to learn a little bit more. Um, Pastor Katie will be leading a Lunch and Learn book study on the book Leading Faithful Innovation, which invites all of us into the work of discernment. How can we meet the spirit in this moment in the life of our church? The study will begin January 7th at noon, and I hope to see many of you there. Finally, I'm so delighted to see you all today at this service, this very special service of worship, and I hope to see many of you again later today because it's also Christmas Eve, right? We have three opportunities to worship this afternoon and evening. Um, four o'clock, we have our contemporary family worship. Um, six o'clock, we have our traditional worship with the choir and the bell choir. And uh, at 10.30 p.m., if you're staying up late with me, uh, you're welcome to come to the Eventide worship service. There's a few different styles of worship, but all proclaiming the same good news, celebrating Jesus Christ with us. And finally, finally, next Sunday, if you are here next Sunday, please be here at 9.30 because we have just one service, but it's a really special one. It'll be a brunch church. Um, we'll be sharing a meal and sharing worship together at the same time. And you are welcome to bring a favorite breakfast or brunch food um, as we celebrate and ring in the new year. It's worship and a feast. And now let us prepare our hearts for worship. A reading from Genesis chapter 3. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. They hid among the trees in the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? The man said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. God said, who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me and I ate. Please stand as you are able. 
This story we remember from Genesis is a deep, primordial story of humanity that plays out in every human life. We rebel against God, we blame others, we hide the truth of ourselves and our own imperfect lives. But God sees through our hiding and speaks to us with a promise that the truth alone will set us free. So we come before God and one another seeking freedom and speaking truth. God of all creation, all you have made is good, but we are tempted. We stumble and stray from your right path. Give us the strength to resist and reject the pride that seeks blame, isolation, or the desire to be right. Help us to trust in you. Search our hearts for the things we would hide, even the things we think we've already dealt with. We need your grace. Amen. Today we celebrate God's unfailing love that looked on a world troubled by sin and chose to enter it, chose to enter into it himself. Not with the fire of anger, but with the gentle humility of a child. In the love of this Christ child, friends, you are forgiven, always and completely forgiven. Amen. The second lesson is from Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 through 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies. And by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. be seated unless you're a kid and you're coming up for kids in Christ. Um, please, all of the children are invited to come to the front of the sanctuary um, where we'll have a message for the kids. Are there any kids coming up? No? For all, a message for all of us? Absolutely. This message is for all the young at heart, always, that's true. And for the kids who are coming up, Hi. Welcome. 
Hello. Thank you for coming up with me this morning. Hey. Hey. Hi. I'm Pastor Veronica. Hi. Come on up. Here, you sit here. I'll sit here. We always start our messages at Kids in Christ with the sign of the cross. So you can copy me. God be in my head. God be in my heart. God be on my left. And God be on my right. Amen. We like to start with the sign of the cross to remind us that God is always with us. So we have something behind you on the wall. Do you see a big clock? Do you see a big clock? Yeah. Where are the hands of the clock pointing? Yeah, it's right there. They're pointing right up top, almost there. Do you know when the hands of the clock get all the way right to the top? It tells us it's midnight. And midnight is the way we think of the start of a new day. Kind of silly because it's in the middle of the night, but that's how we think of it. So the clock is about to hit midnight which means something is about to happen, something we've been preparing for. Do you have a guess what that might be? Hmm, what have we been preparing for? What's happening tomorrow? Christmas, yes, it's almost Christmas. Almost Christmas, we're almost there. How do you feel when you're almost there, when you're waiting for something really exciting, but it's not quite there yet? How do you feel? You can show me wiggles or, or a word. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. You feel a little crazy. You're so excited. Or maybe do you ever get worried a little bit? Something really exciting is happening, but you want it to go well? Yeah, sometimes I feel that way. Well, we might feel excited or really grateful or maybe even a little tired when we're really getting excited about something. But whatever we're feeling, Christmas is almost here almost here. But we know that Jesus is always with us as we reminded ourselves with the sign of the cross. But on Christmas, we celebrate something really special. We celebrate that God gave us Jesus as a gift, as a present to be present with us. And that's something that we celebrate. It's almost here, but look behind you at the manger. Hmm. Do you see Jesus in there yet? Do you see a baby in there? Not yet. Almost. We're still waiting. And so that's why today we have a service where we are remembering the story of salvation. We remember the story of God's promise to save all people with story and song. And we remember one more part of, of that story, which is that it's lived every day in your life and your life and my life, all of our lives, that we're joined to the story of God's salvation. And do you see this blue bowl over here? This blue bowl? Yeah, you can come and touch it. Yeah, this blue bowl is where we baptize. Where, yeah, oh, <laughs> where we remember that the story of God's salvation is lived in our lives too. So we're gonna light a candle, but I need, I need a torch for that, don't I? Is there one around here? Oh, good thing I have helpers. <laughs> Do you want to help me light the candles? Yeah? You can help too. Okay, first I have to get the light from up here. That one's a little tall, so I have to do this part. Whew. There we go. Can you hold it? Yep. Come this way. We're going to, very good. <laughs> okay. We are going to light all six of the blue candles. Okay? So... Very good. And as you light them, this, the candle we light today, the sixth candle we light for love. And we remember God's love for us and for the whole world. Yes, almost. Oh, there we go. Good job. Thank you, Cindy. We remember God's love for us and for the whole world and the love that we get to share with one another, the love that is shown in Jesus. That one is shining really brightly. <laughs> Great job. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Almost there. Ooh, one more. One more. <gasps> Great job. I only have one more right there. 
yeah, that's the one more that we're gonna have to wait until this evening to light. And we're gonna have a prayer for those candles that you just lit for us, so let us all pray. God of mighty deeds and newborn sighs, you are nearly here. As we wait for the final moments of your arrival, as we light the final candle on this wreath, open our hearts to recognize the great things that you have done. Acts of freedom, mountains move, hearts changed, and quiet moments of tender love. Reveal how you have paved a path to the hopeful future that is in store for us and now is so near. Amen. Amen. And you are welcome to stick around, explore the play, playground a little bit if you like. Um, and, and, and we'll continue with the rest of our worship. Our third lesson comes from the ninth chapter of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them, light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and for his kingdom. He will establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And we praise God for the Prince of Peace who brings the everlasting peace, the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with one another and with those gathered online.
I heard the spirit wanting to say thank you. Thank you. Our fourth reading is from the 11th, it continues through the prophet Isaiah from the 11th chapter. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the, the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp. And the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The lesson comes from Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great 
and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The sixth lesson is from the second chapter of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Imperial Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. 
Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. from Luke, Luke chapter 2. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord? This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping who angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our keeping 
The eighth reading is from the second chapter of Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road.
as we come to this time of offering, um, the offering plates will be passed around. You are also invited, I didn't get a chance to mention this at the beginning, you're invited to write any prayer requests you might have on this slip that's in your bulletin. Um, and if you haven't received one of those, run and go find one. No, no I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> these, this is so that our prayers of the people can be the prayers of those who are gathered with us in this time of worship. Ye merry gentle folk, let nothing you dismay. But Jesus Christ, our Savior, was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we are gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God. Heavenly Father, a blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same. How that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. God rest ye men. Gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and We give thanks together for all God's gifts as we offer them back to God. So to every prompt, I invite you to respond with this simple phrase, thank you. Loving God, for the time that we have, we say, thank, thank you, God. For the gifts we offer, we say, thank, thank you, God. You. For the chance to help others, we say, thank, thank you. you. For the people whose lives will be better because of these gifts, we say thank you. Thank you. For the ways you are changing the world, we say thank, thank you. you. We pray in the name of Jesus who appears wherever people need our help. Help us to use these gifts, O oh God, to show your presence to a hurting world. Amen. People of God, we are each other's kin and we are family with all creation. As we wait and yearn for God, we pray together for our community, for the church around the world, and for every need. 
responding to each petition. Hear our prayers yesterday, today, and forever. God, the heavens tremble, the stars fall, and the earth quakes. We pray for places around the world experiencing conflict, for Ukraine, Russia, Palestine, Israel. We pray especially for peace and love in Gaza. And we ask that you be immediately present with all of those experiencing turmoil, violence, and war. Make your dream of peace a reality in our world today. God of all time, hear our prayers yesterday, today, and forever. God, you garden in the wilderness, bringing forth life even where it seems like nothing can grow. We pray for all creation. We give you thanks for the snow-covered Rockies and the water flowing through the Poudre River. We give you thanks for this gift of water through which we will celebrate the baptism of Scarlet Cora this morning and through which we celebrate all those who have baptismal birthdays this week. Pam Stevens and Janie Lichtfuss. We ask that you would continue to give us hearts to care for all of your creation. God of all time, hear our prayers yesterday, today, and forever. God, you create accessible paths through rough terrain, and you love the bodies and minds of all your people. We give you thanks for diverse abilities and we pray for people in need of healing today, especially Karen healing after a fall, for Eden, Florence's great niece. We pray for Debbie's sister, Nancy, that she would get well. We pray for Elliot, hospitalized last week and who is hopefully moving to rehab today. We pray for Tom, who was hospitalized with heart issues. And we pray for all those concerns written in our bulletin. For Cindy, Carla, Teresa, Daphne, Rachel, Jen, Bob, Jan, Elaine, and Becky. We ask that you be Emmanuel, God with us, for those traveling the rough terrains of cancer. For Jamie, Barb, Ken, Laura, Donna, Carol, Rosemary, Jim, Carol, and Carolyn. God of all time, hear our prayers yesterday, today, and forever. God, you call us to rebuild ancient ruins, but we need your help to finish the work. Our need for healing is urgent, and we pray for your justice and peace throughout the world, throughout our country, throughout Northern Colorado. God of all time, hear our prayers yesterday, today, and forever. God, nothing is impossible with you, but it is hard for us to trust what we cannot observe ourselves. We pray for your presence with us whenever we are uncertain or unsure, especially during a holiday season where many of us are missing people, places, traditions that we are familiar with and that we love. We pray especially for comfort and wonderful memories. We pray that that would surround the McCann family at Bill's sister Lynn's passing. We pray for anyone who can't be with their loved ones this Christmas and anyone for whom being with their loved ones is challenging. We ask for world peace, for world love, and for you to show yourself to us in this Christmas time. God of all time, hear our prayers yesterday, today, and forever. God, you are always with us. So we gather these prayers together and we entrust them to your endless love in the name of Jesus Christ, God with us. Amen.
Let us pray. God, our creator, we praise you for the word who was from the beginning, with you and in you, creating all things. O most holy word, source of all life and light for the people, your light has shined across ages of darkness, shining even now into the darkness of our world, and we proclaim that the darkness cannot overcome your light. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. Come among us now, Lord Jesus. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people and fill us with your light. Come, Holy Spirit. Unite us into one body and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. We begin by communing those who are gathered with us online and anyone in the sanctuary here who will be remaining in, in their seat uh, for any reason to receive this gift. If you are here in the sanctuary and you have not received a, a communion kit but you need one, will you please raise your hand just to let our ushers know and we'll get that to you. As you take the bread, hear this promise that is for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. And as you drink from the cup, hear this promise. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. This is Christ's table, and all are welcome. All are invited to receive this gift of God with us. It, today we are communing uh, continuously, which means you'll come down the center aisle and around um, and back to your seats this way. There will be two stations at the front. Um, we will have wine and grape juice. Grape juice is in the middle. Um, the lighter color, and then we'll have wafers as we commune today. All are welcome.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. I just want to say a word of thanks to all of our readers and all of our musicians today who made this service really beautiful. Um, it's a reminder that this is a proclamation. This gospel proclamation belongs to all of us. And so as we go from this place, uh, we go with the good news of Jesus. And I'm going to sneak in one more announcement before the blessing and dismissal. We're still having our Proclaiming the Incarnation Adult Faith Formation study this morning. So uh, if you're not getting enough church today, come hang out. Um, we're going to be talking about Bernard of Clairvaux, who uh, is one of my favorite historical figures. And we're going to be in the conference room this morning instead of in the fellowship hall because the family is setting up for their baptism celebrations at the late service. So we will be in the conference room if you would like to join me. So now please stand to receive this blessing. We will continue with our Advent habit of blessing one another, remembering that we are both Christ to one another and that we receive Christ from one another. Remember that God, our creator, who made the starlit sky, blesses you. God blesses you. Tell your neighbor. God blesses you. Jesus, our Redeemer, who arrives at just the right time, blesses you. Jesus blesses you. Tell your neighbor. Jesus blesses you. <laughs> Jesus, blesses you. Jesus blesses you. And the Holy Spirit, our Enlivener, who sparks hope for the hopeless, blesses you. The Holy Spirit blesses you. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit blesses you. You are blessed in the name of the triune God. Amen. And now go in peace, watch, wait, share that Christ is near. Thanks be to God. <laughs>